to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, you just do the public input? Would you mind? I would not. Either that or we could ask Mr. Dwyer because I think he's still got it memorized. <laughs> yes. um, all right, public input. The first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents. The board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input, for example, matters involving personnel. Is there any public input? Thank you. <laughs> No public input. No public input. All right. Um, so the minutes of, was that our last meeting? December yep. 19th? Yeah. All right. Well, it seems like yesterday. I couldn't find any mistakes, and all the links were Well, they are. Yeah. Look good to me, but I, I always like defer to, to Becky on I these. I double checked <laughs> it today, too, but. <clears throat> yeah, it should be the date is wrong. Yeah, the date's going to change. It says so December 5th. Oh, that's because, yeah. Nope. I on that the was minutes the it does? Yeah. Oh. In the second line. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. What was it being? <laughs> oh, so I skipped close. right past that. <laughs> no. Um. I know. Oh, that was the executive session. Okay. Oh my gosh. Any I'd like to make motion to accept the meeting as amended? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, we're, we're not going to be able to. I'll second it. <laughs> You're not going to be able to. Oh, were you at the meeting? Oh, no, I wasn't. Oh, uh, thank you. You don't have enough, you so don't have, we don't have enough key. members ah. to take you at the here? table. At, who was at the uh, Jan I, the the December 19th? <laughs> well, no, who was we at don't it? have enough. There's only three people, three people here. Yeah, so we'll have to table have to it table. for the next. Uh, we have enough yeah, members yeah. here, but we don't have enough members who there at the meeting to, to make a quorum to okay. accept them. All right, back to the. Good call, Mr. Dwyer. Thank that. you. Oh, is that oh, oh, no. No. Okay. Is there a student report? Okay. Yes. You are in. Thank you so much. So, um, I talked to the class president of the school president. And she said that a while ago they did the holiday parade, the student council represented Noble High School in the holiday parade, and they said that it went really well. And for the meetings following up to the winter pep rally and the spirit week, they are all hands on deck planning that for right now. They recently sent out a poll school wide to, so we could vote on what our favorite spirit days were because they kind of want to turn the spirit weeks into more like student oriented. We can kind of pick what we want instead of them telling us what to do. Okay. And they decided this so we can like all have more school spirit because we kind of chose what we wanted to do. And then another thing they've recently done is the wellness club, which is led by Maddie Mominy. And I think it's a really great thing because it's right in the middle of the day during KT. I think it's either Fridays once a month or every other week. I'm not exactly sure of the schedule, but it just is a time to help like students calm down and de-stress through the day. I know a while ago they like made fruit smoothies and colored, and it's just a really great time for everyone to, like I said, calm down. And I've heard that I haven't been to one personally. I haven't had the time, but everyone who went said that it was a great time. And then for the well, sports, well attended, like 40 yeah. plus kids oh, and did mindfulness kind of stuff. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. And then I unfortunately didn't get a report about the sports side of things, but just from like what other students have told me, I know that there is an away game for basketball tonight, and I believe the track team is doing really well in their meets this year. Yes, and uh, the girls' basketball is, I still think they're undefeated? still undefeated, wow. and, I, and they're playing tonight. So um, I'd like to be able to tell you more than that, but that's what I have on hand. And there, our track numbers are again up in the 60s, 70s for participation. So uh, we're going to swarm Costello. Wrestling right now. won the Noble Invitational. And I think there's been a history of the years that they win the Noble Invitational. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to jinx it. I'm just going to leave it at that. They, there was a write up in the Press Herald, I think, that said that like this is. This year they have the depth 
to do it. Not <laughs> <laughs> yes, Could. they have some very, uh, very talented uh, uh, wrestlers, and they have a number of the weight classes filled, which is a big makes a big difference for a team. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, no, that'll do it. Can you send that to me, sir? Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Can you, are you going to go to that? Or, uh, yes. Sure. Since I left my what do you uh, mean? computer. Oh, no. Um, could you pull up a new tab? Yeah. And yeah. go to uh, Channel 6 Varsity Club yeah. and type in Jared's name with an E. Yeah. I picked my glasses up, but I didn't pick the laptop up. What's that? I saw that on TV. It's pretty neat. That's two this year, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. That's two in this month. That's two in the last month. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, last year. Yeah, and we uh, reached out to Jared Kinsey to see if he could join us tonight, but his schedule would not allow. I'm looking for my search channel. Um, Jared is uh, identified as a Channel 6 Varsity Club member, and he is a wrestler, and he also plays lacrosse. <clears throat> and I'm not finding him, but I'm trying. <laughs> in the in your search bar, if you put in his name, Did he'll he show up. Did also step in as a <clears throat> goalie for soccer? Yeah. Best this would not be him? I did see a picture of him yeah, with I it. With he <coughs> hadn't done that before. With the ball was, wrapped up. No, uh, Safford, I think he filled that spot. Sorry for the delay. Sorry, yep. Yeah. No, while well, I had it on my laptop, ready to go. All right. I think I got it. Yep. Now, turn you back on. Am I supposed to be, what am I doing? Am I casting? Yes, please. You think so, huh? Oh, boy. Yeah. Definitely asking a lot out of me. Uh, library TV? Yes. This is all very exciting. Let's see if it works. You can't retire, Steve. You're the only one that can reach that. He's only one tall enough. Oh, really? Except take a Yeah, Chris is tall. Chris, you have to come to board meetings. Hold on, we gotta do a feel for our tank. We need to have an ad first. Nine seconds. Thank you. Any one? Take out. Okay. Coach Gray. There you go. That's Coach Jackson.
Nice representative of our school. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop casting now. Um, draft calendar discussion. Is this? No, that's not. Yeah, that's yours. Yeah. Okay. So this is so rough. You could take the edges of it and shred them. <laughs> um, as you know, we have 175 school days uh, for the students, which is the minimum number in the state. And that creates a little bit of a difficulty for us because that means we have no flexibility with uh, the Sanford schedule. All the sending schools are required to be within five dissimilar days of the receiving school um, on the approval of their calendars. So when every board approves a calendar, um, <clears throat> for each of their calendars, <clears throat> then those are put into a, a spreadsheet and we look for how many dissimilar days we have and then we have to work out some of those. Um, we, we bargain back and forth on what we can and can't do. <clears throat> In our case, pretty much what I had to say to David the our days or to the previous superintendent or to Matt Nelson, the current superintendent, is how's my calendar looking? Um, we, we, the kids have to be able to go there a certain number of days. One of the things that I'm advocating for at the state level is that when we have an agreement that if you have a dissimilar day, for instance, let's say on, I'll just pick a date, uh, uh, the October 9th, <clears throat> if that's a day that we have a teacher workshop and other schools don't have it, we still send our SRTC students. We take the rounds of the district, we pick the students up, we take them, uh, they, they come here, we still do SRTC. So even though the calendar might say dissimilar day, we frequently will write on it, uh, for instance, on October 9, it says, in this particular case, it says that SRTC is not in session, but we usually say SRT in session, SRTC. Um, that is not allowable under s the state regulations. So we may technically be only out of compliance by three days across eight different sending schools to Sanford, but we get a, a letter saying you're out of compliance, this doesn't work, which to me is, is just, I'm baffled by it. it, it makes no sense. So we'll be continue, I'll be continuing to push that at the legislative level. <clears throat> Um, right now, the on I've only seen two draft schedules. I've seen uh, uh, calendars. Uh, Sanford has two drafts out, and they start on two different days. So that's, you know, for us, I, I don't really know what to say about ours yet. Um, and then I saw MSAD 57s, and theirs is starting on the same day that we're starting on this. So one of Sanford's <coughs> drafts, this draft and their draft start on the same day. So hopefully we can get something in. Chuck, did you get a copy of this or would you like it? Okay. Would you like a, a paper copy? <coughs> okay. All right. Saving paper. All right. <laughs> so um, what we have in the calendar is uh, we meet the 175, we meet the uh, the six teacher days. One of those, for instance, uh, teacher workshop day on June 16th is listed, but in reality it's just a placeholder because in the contract we have one flex day for teachers during the year in which each building has a particular topic that they're working on and that's done on the, on the teacher's time outside of the regular school day on that topic. Um, then also this year if we had a teacher workshop day on September 1st, Chuck, that cuts us in half. 
That's one day that's actually in the calendar uh, because the calendar works from September 1st through August 31st. And where we've been stuck the last few years is that the only way to get the two workshop days in would be to have them prior to, uh, to uh, September, uh, yeah, September 1. So we're, we're actually in, the, in, in a half a better shape with those workshops. Um, we make the workshops the first, this year for instance, the, the first two workshops that happen in August are optional. And if somebody says that they cannot make it because they have other scheduled events or whatever is going on, that's fine. Uh, they're not obligated contractually to be there for the first two days. Uh, however, that's when you know you get everybody together and you get uh, the opening introduction, and then you have your your school setting the course for the year, and then you have teachers working on their teams and in the classrooms and so forth. So most people, actually, I think it was 99% of people this year, 99 and a half said. We're there. We're there. We're just going to be there. So everybody gets the importance of it and understands the complexity of the calendar. Um, I think I would like one or two people. And, and when they can't make those first two days, then we offset that with two other days, like the Friday before Christmas this year, Friday before the December break, and then also the Friday before April vacation. So those are the offsetting days for people um, and it, it's worked out we've been doing that's we've done that two years I think so we'll in next year we're we're off one more and then I think the year after that they'll be back on to where they can have two within the same year is that correct yeah I th uh, no, the holidays on the seventh so I'm not sure I gotta I gotta think that one over and see how that plays out Looks like it pushes it back. So a little bit, a little bit of difficulty, but we work it out. Good relationships with the, with the, with all the different associations and people understand the the difficulty that we face with competing contract language and competing state law. So it's it's, it's still uh, graduation. They can only graduate five days before. Everybody else. Um, that's still seven days. So uh, one. Sam, what year are you? Uh, this year. Oh, okay. So seniors are, everybody else is required 175 as a minimum for students. Seniors are required a minimum of 168. We had to push it back to the second full week, typically in June, because the first full week with the snow days, we've been we've been averaging eight and nine over the last mm. three years, yeah. and we've already used. Gee, we just dodged two. Thank goodness. Um, we've already used three. We've already used three, and we haven't even started the the winter session really. I, yeah, we don't want to have to change graduation like whatever, yeah. or have them yeah. come in on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah we did we was. did Saturday school two yeah. two times. That's that's not a place to be. So this is just a really, uh, it's a really rough draft. Jen Flewelling has done a very nice job uh, uh, figuring out some of the intricacies of this for us. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll work with the different associations to, to have people go through this, give us information about what works, doesn't work, see if they catch anything in here that might be off for us uh, in counts or whatever. And then I'll just continue to wait to see what happens with Sanford. Any questions for me on that? Sam, you have no thoughts about next year's school calendar? Uh, I don't get it. Thank you, but no thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, the draft calendar discussion. So, Sue, are you? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This one. Oh, right. Superintendent. Yeah, Superintendent. Um, Which we'll get into that timeline you're yeah, looking that's what I was thinking. Is that what we're doing next? Yes. yes. Okay. So, I can talk this out. You guys can have a few out there, too. Yeah. Oh, you have to get paper. I have paper copies. Okay. It just seemed easier as we're talking through. Yeah. Um, so, what I did was I took... Pass those along, you can have a copy for you. 
really get much choice in this, I'd however. I'd like to give you um, some feedback, though. If you, yep, so this is help. actually just a combination of the budget timeline that we have plus the um, the hiring calendar that we sort of put together. Um, and it's a little bit rougher for January just because we're sort of in that mix. We're working, I have a copy of the ad that I'm just going to share with the um, the three board members that are um, playing with it. I think I've shared it out with them and we're just getting ready to put that in the papers and send off to New England School of, um, oh gosh, what is it? NASDAQ. New England, NASDAQ, yep, that's it. <laughs> and MSMA to, to get out to people and as well as put on um, School Spring and LinkedIn and all of the various educational things. Um, so that's coming out and we're looking at, so, so the way that you look at this, the bolded information is all about the superintendent search and then the regular pieces are the budget piece and then we have our little indicators of board meetings, citizen action and then the maroon is when the board is participating in the superintendent search. So I tried to get some of that clear enough. It's not it's not easy. It's mostly on the back rate right, where you guys start to kick in as a full board. Um, so I guess just take some time and look it through and ask me questions. The, the, the pieces that are regarding the budget timeline you've already seen. This is just added information to that document that we <coughs> shared a couple weeks ago, I think. Just wanted it to be on all in one place. And I will share it in the uh, Google Docs as well for you guys. So will we be meeting weekly for the budget? So looking through your pieces, um, you we are going to try not to meet weekly, but I think we've left some information available. So um, the the looking let's let's just kind of go through. Um, left some dates available. Yeah, we did leave some dates available. Um, so budget discussions, so Thursday, February 27th, we've got the superintendent will present the budget to the board, his, bu his budget to you all. Um, we'll do a question and answer with the board and cost center managers. Um, and then the fifth is budget discussions. So that's that, that week. So we've left, then we have a skip until the 19th and then another skip until the second. So we're trying not to meet every single week. Okay. We're very optimistic. But you know, leave those days available. As long available. as we have no snow. Right, right. And if things <laughs> are just easy, That's a great right. Point. If it's just think? easy. Certain days, no snow. Yep. <laughs> um, the 19th of March, we're, we have the regular budget discussion meeting with the board, and then we'll have a workshop at the end of it to talk about final interview questions and everything for the superintendent Which conversations. On the That's on March 19th. Okay. Okay. Um, we're looking at narrowing everything down to the three finalists that, the that, week of April 6th. A workshop or an executive session? Um, we put it down as a workshop so people could have conversations. It's not anything that needs to okay, be. Okay, so it's, it's not, not the specific questions themselves. Right, it's just the conversation about questions. I'd be really interested as a candidate to watch that yeah. meeting. You bet. <laughs> so I could probably kick Terry out if we need to do that. So we, we'll talk it through. And, Ma and Maureen would turn off the mic too. Yeah, so yeah. She'd be so, yeah. so our goal is to bring a candidate to the board for full final vote on each April 16th. So is it looking like, so we're going to have like three different meetings? April if, looks busy for us. If, yeah. if we come to the school tour part on March, so it's going to be three different times that week. Yeah. And yes. then same yeah, that's thing in the week of April 6th, three different or all the same night? So the, hold on one second. Um, the week, the, the, the April 6th, the week of April 6th, we'll do those three interviews in one night. Mm -hmm. In one night. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So they can make comparison. And the week of where we're doing the, um, um, -da, March 9th through 13th, we'll have one community night. Okay. But the candidates may come in different days to meet, to meet, to go throughout the schools and mm -hmm. talk with people individually. But they'll have one candidate night for community night, so that we're not having the community out three different times. Mm -hmm. And and it, again, it's a little bit easier to <coughs> do some thoughts about people when they're right in front of you, one right after the other, versus trying to remember from space to space. So, yes. 
Sure. Um, it may, you know, subject to change, <laughs> with or without notice, depends yeah. on what's going on. But this is really just sort of an outline of the next six months while we try to work through this. Has the job been posted anywhere yet? Nope, I have the final um, copy right now, the ads that, that the three folks need to look at. And then. Yep. Okay. Yep. No, this is all this is all good for board um, budget and superintendent hiring timeline, so it's perfect. Well, are the interviews and everything public or that just with the board? Those are just with the board, okay. yeah. but it's okay to share that they that they're going to be interviewing on a certain date. Yeah, because the, but the March, public won't be allowed. Right. That's, in, that's those are executive sessions. Yeah, right. in that March session, the March 9th through the 13th, it right. talks about. Yeah. There'll be that one community forum right. That, right. that people can. Right. But I was just talking about this dates, April yeah. 6th. When yeah. we April 6th would just be the okay. board. Just the board. Yeah. 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 That'll be an executive session, okay. and I can put that on there. I'll write this for you, Terry, and then you can. No, but I'll add it to the. Yeah. <coughs> so, I think, does anybody else have questions? <coughs> All right. So that's that. Are we going to talk about what, when are we going to talk about what we're going to use from um, so That was the conversation that was, we were supposed to be talking about at some point tonight, although I thought Estrita was going to be here to lead I, that, so I'm yeah, feeling I a just, little. I got a text from her, which I hadn't looked at my phone, yeah. saying that she's not able to be. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so. Oh. And I did get a text right. from her. Good for us for not looking at our phones I didn't get that text before now. Um, <laughs> so I think that we had talked last week two weeks ago now, about what services do we want to pull down from MSMA and what services do we want to you know, leave for us to, to develop. I don't know, honestly, that we have specifically figured that out yet, to be honest with you, Nancy. I think that what we had talked about was, would you, as a board, approve a certain amount of money to be able to be spent on this and utilize MSMA at that level, and we would fill you in. We're not going to like just sanction the service without talking to you as a full board first. Um, but I think that one of the things that we wanted to do is at least reach out to them to let them know that we were interested in and, and basically looking at the options that they have and kind of choosing a la carte versus a whole kit and caboodle. Um, and I think other than the, like there had been some question about the initial um, sort of hiring piece, but. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you, you've done a really thorough job with that. So aside from that, I think the rest of the um, pieces of interest were a little bit farther along in the process, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. not, you know, we well, have a little. I, I, I guess my question is, where was this money coming from in the budget? Do we That's have? Okay. I mean, and well, so since he didn't this? let us know that he was doing well, I know. this, That's it's not there. Got a contingency <laughs> for let you know, like, seven you know. and a half months <laughs> early. Jeez. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so I think we would have to look at, um, there are some central office miscellaneous funds that we would probably utilize. I think that's where it was. There's not a, it's not a ton, but it would cover probably what we yeah, need. And this, uh, we had um, more funds than we anticipated in the changeover. So when you book a position in last year's budget to say we think it's going to cost Seventy-two thousand dollars for this fifth-grade teacher to come in, or something like that. Or let's say at the uh, in the high school when we added two ninth-grade positions. Sometimes those costs don't come in to be exactly what you're booking them at. Um, so uh, we're safe on that side of it. My question was, what lead time does MSMA? require I mean can they just hop on to whatever we need them to do at that moment or is there I think this so. is their they're, primary yeah. this is a big piece of their world so I think they're very capable. legislation and superintendent um, process okay yes they, they seem need very totally flexible um, yeah so they'll assist in hiring they'll assist in uh, you know they're if you look in the newspapers right now, there are three or four hotbed situations going on in some other districts, and so they'll assist with trying to help remediate 
difficult situations and so forth that can occur personnel personnel wise the last time we went through this did we I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. we had them do pretty much the whole thing right we did but interestingly the first time we had them do the whole thing and then when we hired and then that gentleman decided not to yes we had we we put the interim in place and then the second time that you went out you actually used Eric Knowlton yes to do pretty much Excellent. what I'm doing right now so exactly. and that was my other thought too mm -hmm. is we we I thought we did a pretty good job but because we'd just been through it yes yeah, person exactly um, I'm just worried about you know I don't want too much to be I don't know none of us want too much to be mm -hmm. put on your plate added well, I mean, obviously, around. I have a fairly vested um, interest know. in this, so <laughs> I'm happy to put uh, myself in that yeah. that role. But I will. I am very um, comfortable telling you what I what I feel like I can or can't do. Yeah. And if I get to a, like one of the things that we are talking about is developing the ad was fairly simple. Honestly, I mean, yeah. it's you know you just look at some different things and then put the flavor of the district on it. Um, but a brochure is something that. I think we may want to do just to like send out and you know advertise us in a, in a good positive way I think that the ad does a nice job but I think probably some uh, brochure might be something that and I don't have time to do that that's right the now. next level so yeah. Yeah. It, when we we see we get emails all the time from a NASDAQ that tell you about any opening in New England mm -hmm. pretty much and uh, on occasion we'll get a brochure mm -hmm. and the nice part about the brochure is it's a selling feature to yeah. the candidate it's as well because yeah. it tells you about the community not just about mm -hmm. who you're looking for right. so it's so I think if we get to the place where we decide we would like to do a brochure for distribution I would ask for some support with that and a streeter actually said that she'd be willing to like do some of it because she's done some brochure work before um, and Brenda Gagne actually told me about someone who's interested in helping with that so it, it may not be something that we need to utilize MSMA for but we may have to expend a little bit of yeah. you know finances to like hire somebody on a per diem kind of thing great yeah. so how do you um, timing wise for that when do you think that you will know whether you feel like that's the right the do. brochure piece I think by the end of next week we'll okay. decide what so I think we can I once this this ad is okay with everybody finalized I think we can put the ad out honestly tomorrow um, we just have to decide so some of the part that we need your approval for is expenditure of funds mm -hmm. for advertising so I'm going to need you to be okay with us placing ads in um, some of the more like do you want something do you want something national do you want something regional do you want like what are you looking for in terms of how widespread is your search um, MSMA is obviously I would ask them to distribute because they have all of the links to all of the current superintendents assistant superintendents anybody that's sort of got the superintendent um, interest um, NASDAQ is all, is a New England based similar and we pay a subscription to them already yeah so those are things I would get out to. so those are sort of those easy ones but then there's the question of do you want to do something like look a little differently and say advertise on LinkedIn um, and some of the other more business aspect groups none of it hurts right you never know what your candidate pool is going to look like um, we are going to be competing um, with the uh, several yeah. in our area who are going to be looking for superintendents that Maine. are also looking right now in, that will be will in be Southern they're Maine. in the process yeah yeah, no? yeah. so no of course there's no place like MS 60 yeah, so absolutely. you know we won't have that any problems yeah um, so that's what one of the things that I would ask the board to give us permission to expend funds on this search piece um, and you can I, I suppose if you do it in the um, a more general realm and you say up to a certain amount of money which could you be utilized for MSMA or it could be utilized mm -hmm. specifically for regular advertising and you know do you want the Boston Globe do you want you know those kind of things so um, and I, and will I think the other piece for the the big the general board is is that um, I believe Estrita had planned on getting the four of us together that are on the committee um, to just really hammer this down soon so that we can you know, like 
you can trust us to do that part of it. So, so do we need to get a motion to? Yeah, I think it would be helpful so that we can move forward. What kind of money are you talking about? Yeah. Um, I think I would start with just something as simple as you know twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, and then we can always change. We yeah, always if we need more, we can do more. If we don't need that, right. like just spend up to, up to that amount of money and. I think we should be well into it, and my hope is that we wouldn't spend any more than that. In fact, if we can go less. And you think that <coughs> could include the cost of advertising? Um, currently, yes. I think okay. it could include the, that should keep us to the cost of advertising. If we need to come back, if we look at it and say, I'd really like MSMA to do this piece of it, and they're charging this much money, we can talk to you guys about that individually, if that makes sense, and the board can make a decision at a later date. I don't want to say, you know, give me five grand and we'll go for it. Let, let's start with the 2,500 and hopefully we can meet our needs that way. Do, does somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. <laughs> we authorize the committee to spend up to $2,500 in advertising. Thank or you. Super yeah, second it. All right, thanks. Well, any discussion? Questions? Is it directly just for advertising or was it for? No, you I, think, I think what process. I said was for the process. Oh, for the entire process. Sorry, I thought well, it was just for advertising. Uh, well, so I, if you could just broaden it for now, that would okay. be great. If you do, if you do just <laughs> to begin you find the out process, what you're there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. to begin the hiring process. Sorry. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, Who's second? six. Did you second that one? Okay. Six, oh, yep. And let's see, we're missing Estrita. Thank uh, you. Rebecca. And Lynn. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Sue, so thank you for putting this, sure. the timeline together. That's sure. helpful. And Mm -hmm. It's a little I'll scary take. when you look at it. You go, oh, oh, when you turn it, when you turn it over, it's empty. I know. It's great when it only goes through March. Yeah. This is a related topic. Okay. So Drummond Woodson, um, we've we've used uh, Drummond Woodson two times that I can think of in the last eight years we had, um, and they were both on special education topics. One time Alec Miller came down and another time um, Isabel Ekman came down and worked with the board. Those were in, in short sessions prior to executive sessions, I believe, on specific cases. Um, one of the things that is a fairly common practice that I wanted to pass by you is that um, it, is, it would not be unusual for a board to schedule a July workshop that is the board and the new superintendent <coughs> to work for, let's say, for, let's have a day that's a workshop and work, work for two to three hours of that time with um, a third party like Drummond Woodson uh, to, to um, work on aspects of how to create the new culture and, and how, the, how the system works. So that that way the board's understanding and the superintendent's understanding matches up really well as soon as you start the school year because once the school year starts, it's too late. <laughs> that's just that's what it that's what it is. And I think it's um, um, if, if let's say for instance a particular um, person from Common Woodson that I'm thinking of is approximately three hundred fifteen dollars per hour. Not a bad rate uh, if you're in the line of work. Um, so it would be something that would cost up to about $1,000 to have that legal come because you have to pay for travel too as well. So sorry, it's amazing, 315 that per hour <laughs> <laughs> you pay for travel too. Yeah. So I just would put that out there to the board to be thinking about that it might be a, a really good, who, 
whoever you hire is definitely going to have an entry plan. And the entry plan is going to be most informed by that kind of level of work with directly with you folks and you with that person and having somebody, the person can't lead it him or herself on week one or week two. And the board doesn't want to lead that. So you pick an independent group who poses the questions and you get the nice uh, let's get it off the ground and let's in the in the warm and fuzzy and then you get into the okay now what do you do with this and what do you do with that and it's it's good board discussion uh, hashing things over so I would just recommend the board consider something like that I have a question yes. um, is that something that in our budget don't we have a, a legal line mm -hmm. anyway is that something that could come out of that if there was yes the only thing is that yeah, uh, no. if the board decided that that was an idea that they wanted to pursue I would have I would want to reach out to um, legal counsel and lock a date in that works for people earlier rather than later I think it's a great idea. I, I think, think it's really it important is. that we're both on the same page. And if we're in the same room talking and listening to one another, I think that would be very beneficial for a good start for everybody. Because yeah, you, you don't know if you're going to have an, a person who's had experiences in uh, school systems at that role or had central office experience or is coming right. from school experience it could be any of the mix of those and so the in the it could be from in maine could be somebody who has no experience in the state of maine what does that look like so um, i have another question mm. who comes up with that entry plan do we do that no, no um who when, does? Whoever when comes in if somebody out uh, here's the way they come up with their own entry if plan? you if somebody if if somebody is a finalist that comes to a table and they don't have an, il an entry plan, oh, I would say the list just got shorter. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's put that on so our list is, of questions this to is, ask. <laughs> <laughs> this is, what is what your is entry your plan? plan? Yeah. What, if, if they're not prepared for the question, <laughs> what does your entry plan look like? Okay. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. That's 101. Yeah. Yeah. Good to yeah. know. I would like you to pursue that. I, I think it's a great idea. So uh, I'll uh, put, um, I'll check in with legal counsel, see what uh, July dates may be available, and then I'll put those back out to you folks. And right, just put it on. Yeah, we get it. Get it locked in. Have it in place. And then we'll just make sure that Nancy's schedule works. It's not my schedule. <laughs> you have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Yeah. So you'll know like within the next couple of weeks. I hope to know. Well, I I hope I can know within the next week or so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, you, if you folks are in favor. Don't plan your vacations yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's a talk? Say that again. 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 Say that Sounds like yeah. French Lick. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so what's the name of it? Um, uh, what board superintendent relations? I don't know what what is it. Kind of a relationship. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, jumpstart sounds weird. Yes. You know. We need Linda there. So. <laughs> yeah. Say that again. Earlier in the month we need Linda. Yeah, it's at the end. Earlier in the I month. Think it's the end. I think it's actually the end of July to like August first and second. Okay. It's really at the end of July. Okay. We'll go early. So early July. Yeah. I will. Uh, Ground running. Yeah. With this poor person. That's probably good too. Yeah. Is that something that we need a motion on? Uh, no. Okay. No, you just uh, directing me to uh, take an action for you. All right. Um, employment. Hires. Yeah. So I have. Um, Two resignations, um, which obviously those things can happen during the school year. Uh, first off, I received a letter from Nicole Tibbetts, he, and Nicole is, is one of our two daytime custodians here at the high school. She's been with the district for a number of for a number of years. Uh, I don't know, seven or eight years, far, as far as I know, as long as I've been here. 
And um, she says, please accept this letter as a formal notification. She's resigning from her position as custodial maintenance. Uh, her last day will be January 24th. It's been, she's been here and has enjoyed the opportunity to work here for the past seven years, learning new things and working with some great people. Uh, she will be uh, taking a different direction in her uh, career path, and that happens to be just down the street in a very large building, I believe. Yeah. So um, I don't need a motion or anything by the board for the, for the custodial. Uh, group, but I thought I would share that with you because she's been a, a really hard worker and a great, a great face for the community as they come into the building. Always very gracious, very helpful, and she's at a ton of things. She'll be ticket taking at the gate mm -hmm. at a football game. She'll be um, helping do you name it. I just I see her everywhere at everything, and if she's not working she's uh she's there just to watch the students and the sports so we wish her well yeah we do thank you, yeah. thank you. i'll share that with her and then um also this one is a an occupational therapist position so those are not under the teacher contract it's a it's a contracted service um this is from crystal and keenan uh, please accept this letter of resignation effective January 9th, 2020. It's been my pleasure to work for the MSAD 60 for the past 16 years, and I wish the district only the best. So she's going to go on to a different endeavor, and uh, her, her her husband is a former employee here as well, and uh, Crystalline is certainly a highly skilled yes, occupational okay. therapist that won't be easy to fill, particularly because it's also a 0.6 mm. position. So we'll mm. we'll have a little bit of a challenge with that. Susan Macri's up to the challenge, though. She's had quite the year, hasn't she? Has. She's, so, uh, <laughs> she's like, gee, I'm fine. Just catch a break. Yeah. 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 Pass that up. Any other? I just have an other. Last week we had a um, request by Chris Dudley about the um, sort of like a conversation about any issues with race liaison, race liaison yeah. that kind of thing. So I did reach out to her and have um, connected with her and we're going to meet oh. probably next week to discuss what she's Does everybody know about. Chris Dudley? Christine Dudley? Mm -hmm. She's, she's, she's uh, uh, if, if you go when we go to the uh, to the budget meetings she's one of the clerks for north Berwick. Yeah. 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 Um, so she was really pleasant and so i think she's had her son is now in college and i think she's just had some opportunity to have some conversations at the unh level with people that she's met and she thought it would be beneficial to the district so i'm going to meet with her next hopefully next week to try to <coughs> just want to let you know that we i did follow up on that oh i have another um Travis and Linda and I were contacted by the Berwick. Yes. Help me out here. Simo. The what? Uh, planning coordinator. The, planning. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, James it, Bellissimo. Yes. Bellissimo. Inviting us all or one of us or whatever to join their committee sure. as they look at um, kind of some of the expansion that Berwick is looking at. Um, I don't know. I know Travis. I think I saw your response. I don't know, Linda, if you were in conversation. But I'm I'm going to be able to go to the next meeting or uh, next next meeting. So I'll just you know they wanted to reach out to the school board to make sure that right. there was some. You know, you he know. follows through on everything. If I send out a note on, uh, once a quarter saying, can you please update this Google Doc for me? These, this is what we know about the status of permits going on or, or what's what's changed and so forth. It's a day later. James yeah. is right on top of it. So I really appreciate, uh, I've, I've significantly, it, it, the information he provides us is timely and accurate. Uh, very easy person to work with. Great. Well, was, I, I think we all probably just appreciated them reaching out anyway. Yeah. yeah. I think we're strong. We said the second Thursday of every month. I'm already committed to something the second Thursday oh, of every okay. month in the evening. It's of every month. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. so, come on every week. 
Yeah. Well, I know I can get to. Second I can't go Thursday? next week, but I can go the Second next one. Thursday. Thursday. Can you just forward me that email just so I can yeah. put the, the right words yeah. in here? Thank you. Because during, during, what is it? March or April, I think your Thursdays are coming. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, kind of busy. Yeah, yeah looking for. Yeah, I, I saw that, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask someone to cover my my, uh, my spot. Yeah. Is there any other public input? Thank you. Yeah, she should. Seeing none. Seeing none. I move that we adjourn. <laughs>